for this house about a month ago, and um, I was really trying to get here. Um, and, you know, I had so much stuff going, but I'm here. And Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. to the word that God has given and uh, because we are we are in a time where everything is unstable the economy is unstable saints of God are unstable our lives physical lives are unstable and um, God has given me a word and it's it's heavy but before I get to the word, I want to say this. Um, we all, I, I prophesied and I told him that this is a time that there's going to be an exchange of wealth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. There's going to be an exchange of wealth. And, and this is going to happen for the believer that's ready. Because everybody's not ready. Now, I want you to know because has nothing to do with how long you've been in God. Uh, I've been saved 20, 30, 40 years. Don't make no difference. God is looking for certain people that he can pour into. Do y'all hear me? Go ahead. Now, first of all, and I want you to get this. Um, um, everybody's not going to receive it. Because uh, I've asked some people. And I said, uh, God wants to give you a million dollars. Tell me why should he give you a million dollars? And no one came up with the answer. And God dealt with me. He said, well, you know, why should I give you a million dollars? And most of the people say, well, because I'm going to pay my tithes and my offer. If you save, that's a given. God is depending on you to do that if you say Right? I, you know, I want to bless others. And, you know, I want you know, my kids to go to the best school. And, 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 and God was like, no, that's not it. Because we're looking to bless me and my fault and no more. And we wonder why others are getting it. We've seen here in the valley people start for nothing and rise up and like, how in the world did they do it? And we got better choirs, we got better singers, we got this, we got that. But we ain't got the faith. Now, the question, the answer is this. There's two types of people. There's people that save, and there's people that invest. And 95% of us is, us. we just like to save. We save. But savings is not going to get you anywhere. Savings maintain you Amen. for that time. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? He, Jesus said, I came, uh, he had three people. He gave one one talent, mm -hmm. one two talent, and one five, five talent. Mm -hmm. And the one who had five, he brought back, he said, Lord, I got ten. He said, I'm going to make you rule of 10 cities. The one that had two, he said, I'm going to give you a, a, a four. Because you've been faithful over a little, I'm going to make you faithful over a The one who had one saved it and sat on it and didn't do nothing with it. The reason why you are not prospering is because you're just saving. God is looking for someone that's going to give him a return. God is looking for someone that has a plan that God, I got a plan of return back to you. That's yeah. right. Go ahead. You look at the shata, behind. This is free. Because I want I want the body to be blessed. Jesus. Not just my body, but the whole body. Amen. Do you understand that? That's right. This is not the message. This is this is for you that God can take you to another level. Go ahead. It's time that you make a plan. A plan for you, a plan for your wife, a plan for your marriage, a plan for your children. It's time to get a plan and write it down. Yes. 
and say, this is what I'm going to do. A short term and a long term plan. God is looking for somebody that has a plan. Not just to say Because we've been, listen, we've been blessed on and off all down through the years. But we're, we're still in the same place. We started here, but we're still here. All right, all right. But God is saying, no, I want to take you past here. So I'm looking for someone that has a plan. Each one that's inside of an a auxiliary, elders, ministers, deacons, you should start getting a plan and sitting down and say, Bishop, we got a plan. I know pastors and bishops and apostles all over the different places over the United States that been here 40, 50 years, don't own their own house, don't own their own car. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Don't own a church. Where's the plan? Apostle said he got six people. He said, I've been praying, I'm seeking God, I've been fasting. And I, and I, I need, I, I want God to give me this big church. And God said plainly to me, why should I give it to you? You got six people, you ain't going nowhere. You got six people for the last 15 years. Why should I give you a bigger church? You don't have a plan. Not just because you good. Because I pay my tithes and my offer. He said, because these people got and they don't share. And yeah, because look, I'm not sharing with people that don't know how to take care of nothing. Oh, what I'm sharing with you, are you tearing everything? I put a brand new thing. You knock it down. No. He said, they don't even want to rent the church out. I understand. Because people don't take care of nothing. They don't have a plan. This is free. Get a plan and put it before God. God is, there's some, there's some many years in the birth. See, someone has been prophesied to y'all, but y'all sat on it. Y'all sat on it. Sat on your extra money. Sat on it. And I ain't talking about just come bring it to the church. God is looking for you, because he's looking for someone that's going to invest. Someone that said, we want better. We want to do better. That when Bishop leaves, guess what? There's a house already built, paid for. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. For the next generation, and they don't got the struck. Come on, somebody. I'm, build, I'm building generational wealth right now. I, I'm not building wealth. I, 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 I'm already, I'm, I, I'm happy. I'm building generational wealth. For the next generation, the next generation. God's looking for somebody with a plan. Come on, let's give God some praise. <laughs> the word of the Lord comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 34. Chapter, I'm sorry. Um, Chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35. Thank God for Mother Raglan and Sister Edwards being in the building. Thank you, Jesus. The word of the Lord says, and God says unto Jacob, Arise, go to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God. That appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau, thy brother. And Jacob said unto the, his household, Jacob's the pastor, and he says to the whole church, listen to this. He says, and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that among you, and be clean. And change your garments. And let us arise. And go up to Bethel. And I will make their altar unto God. Who answered me in the days of my distress. And was with me in the way which I went. 
He was with me when I was going the right way. Mm -hmm. And he says, and they, and they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hands and all the earrings and which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. Go to me, uh, John 5 and 1. After this, there was a, fe a, a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongues, Bethesda, having five porches. They had a big church. They had all kinds of levels of people. And in these laid a great multitude of important folk. A great multitude of important folks, a blind hawk, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first was after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. God had a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. I want to talk about, just for a few moments, Picking up, getting stuck, and becoming jaded. Picking up, getting stuck, and becoming jaded. Now, I didn't know what jaded meant for a while. Uh, uh, that means become numb to something. All right, so they, they picked up stuff. They got stuck with what they picked up, and they became numb. All right? So I want you to work with me because we have taken life for granted. We have taken it for granted. We have allowed uh, things to slip from us. Goods that God gave us. We have just overlooked it. We've become stuck and we've become numb to the things of God. Okay, okay. Jacob got saved. When Jacob got saved, he, he called on the name of his Lord, name of the Lord, and God saved him in a day of his trouble. His brother was going to kill him. And he saved him and God delivered him. God sends him to Laban, his uncle, and he stays with Laban for 20 years. 20 years he's serving Laban uh, for uh, two, 14 for two wives and seven years for six years for possession. And every time he tried to get blessed, Laban tried to knock him down. Isn't it something that we always got someone who's supposed to be looking after us, knocking us down? And, 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 and Laban didn't want to let him go. And, and I come to let somebody know that because you got stuck and numb, Satan don't want to let you go. Yeah, yeah. See, now I want you to understand something because in those 20 years of getting stuck, the Bible said that Jacob and all his people that he was under, they picked up strange God. Oh, yes. They picked up things that was not from the way they went. The way they started. Oh, tell somebody, it's time to go back to church. It's time to go back to church. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I'm letting you know right now that God is sending people back to Bethel. Uh, let me slow down. God is sending people back to church. But these people that are going to come back to church, they're ready to strip. Mm. Yeah. They're ready to strip themselves because they've been out so long in the world that they became like the world. Oh, God. Yeah, y'all don't hear me. We was fighting to get the world out the church. God shut the church down. Guess what? And those church went out in the world. Now he's opening back up the church. And now the, oh, don't, the world has come back into the church through the church. pandemic, it has affected the body of Christ. 
has affected us so much that we become numb to things. Don't care about this no more. Don't care about that no more. You know, listen, you should be glad that I'm in the building. Jay. No. They don't fear God. I've been through this over and over and over. I've seen it already. I've been here already. But God, God had to teach me and show me something, this shepherd. He had to let me know that I want you to understand that our life is as a vapor. Oh, yes, yes. It appears for a moment and then vanishes away. He said, I want you to understand because, see, we, 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 we take it for granted. We take it for granted that guess what? Uh, you know, I'm young, and because I'm young and I look good and fine as wine, that guess what? I'm going to be around as long as wine. But I come to let you know that guess what? God said to let you know that guess what? You are one second away from a tragedy that can change your whole life. See, some of you don't understand it, but God's been merciful. He's been merciful to us. And what's happened is he has allowed us. Because the Bible said at one point, God went at man's ignorance. But now he's commanding man everywhere that we got to repent. I've been But I just become numb to what I'm doing. Numb to what, because I've been in it so long. I know it's not right, but I'm numb. I know because, see, 20 years he picked up these strange gods. But God and his mercy and, 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 and his sovereignty, he said, listen, I'm calling you back to Bethel. I'm calling you back to where the way you went when I first saved you. You got to understand. See, see, you can't come when you want to come. No man can come to the Father except the Son, come to the Son, except the Father. Draw. You can't wake up because I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray. You fast, you pray, and you still in the mess. Oh, come on. I fast, I pray, I cry. And anyone that know me, I know how to pray. I know how to fast. I know how to call on the name of the Lord. But I got jaded. I got numb to it. That I I fake it, to, uh, fake it till I make it, and I'm going to wait till it happens. But God said, I want you to understand something for all you that's faking it till you make it. He said, I want you to understand that you're one second away from a chain. You're one, oh, y'all missed it, y'all missed it. And I'm not talking about a good change. You're one second away from a stroke. You're one second away from a heart attack. You're one second away of dying. You're one, oh, one second. Ago, my son was born on January 6th, and about 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, I can't remember, just happy that I got a new son. I said, me and my wife pushed this baby out. I said, we did this. Nothing was coming out of me, but it was sure I, it sure felt like something was coming. I said, we did this together, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got it. I sure you know how much you did, except for breathe hard. <laughs> and a couple of hours, just excited. You know, the Bible said, the excitement that a child is born. Yeah. Yeah. You forget all the pain. Uh -huh. You forget everything that you're going through. Just because the excitement of the child. And I get a phone call that while in service, praising God, that my sister right here gets a double aneurysm. 
Now y'all know the handrails and the walls. They're made to hold you. They're made to hold a, a, a thousand pounds of pressure and weight. The enemies that hit us so hard is she pulls the whole thing out the wall. Double enemies. Some people don't uh, 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 survive one. Three strokes. Double aneurysm. But look at her now. Double aneurysm, and they said she ain't gonna make it. They said, but I said, no, no, God, she can't go, she got to live. So I went and went through a room, people made it up from upstate, downstate, everybody be across. She got to live. I said, no, she gonna live. I believe the seat of the poor of the Lord. Set praise in God. And one second you was all right. The next second, she's she's seconds from death. Right? Sit back. Just a month and a half ago, my other sister was saved 30 years. Preaching the gospel, little, I mean, my God, powerhouse. Yes, she is. Turn around. Just, she up six, 3 o'clock every morning. I don't be getting up 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm looking at her. I'm not tired. She praying and holding on and agonizing before God, for the saints, for her family, for herself, and walk out the door. She calls me at 4 something in the morning. And she says, I, I'm going to the hospital. She says, well, uh, she says, make sure mm -hmm. they come see you. Uh -huh. You make sure that everything's right. You make sure the doctors, this, this, this. I said, all right, four o'clock. I said, okay, just go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm tired. Because <laughs> you get four, a four o'clock in the morning call, right? right? So I'm like, oh, I can't really go back to sleep. Six o'clock, call me back. I'm scared now. We, uh, they taking me in. By 11 o'clock, she's in a coma. When we get up there, they, they talking about, she's not going to make it. So I got to get on Zoom call with all the family and everybody, listen, she's going to live. Amen. Well, God, the doctors said, we, do, we don't believe. We don't believe. He said, we don't know how. Stage four lung cancer. They took pictures black, the whole lung spotted with cancer. They said, we, they, 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 anyone who works it out, they, they was using 90% of oxygen pumping it. The average person might need oxygen to do 20 to 40% tops. They said, we are pumping it in. You know, it ain't, you know how you put it on in and just breathe and yeah. uh, -uh. They, they had to pump it in her because the, the, the lungs would not open up. So they said if she dies today or during this time, we tell we, we don't advise you to resuscitate because it would destroy her lungs and that would kill her also. We said, listen, uh, we believe God. Amen. My sister stood up and she said, let me tell you something. What you would do for your mother and your sister and your brother, that's how you're going to treat her. We praying, the family crying, because they thought we was giving the last call. But we was like, no, we believe God. I believe I'm a man of faith. Seconds. 
way and agonizing on the floor before a holy God. Four o'clock, you rush to the hospital. Seconds. God said, well, let them know, uh-uh. Because see, we think we got time. He said, get up, and I want you to go back to Bethlehem. I want you to go back the way you went. Enough is enough is enough. God said, I want you to go to the church because not only have they picked up stuff, they're stuck. Okay, he said, what do you mean stuck? Okay, he says, the man at the, uh, at the, uh, at the Porsche, they said, for 38 years, he laid there. And I preached this, I don't know how many times in my life. He said, 38 years, he just stood there. But what, what, what got me, what God stuck out to me, they was at church. And the thing was, they said, there laid a great multitude of impotent folks. A church full of people Once a year, we get one out of the whole bunch that gets delivered. Once a year. A great multitude, but only one is getting delivered. And God said the reason why, because they're stuck on traditions and the rudiments of man. They're stuck. They're stuck at the water. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Everybody to the water, down in Jesus' name, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, man. and guess what? Ain't nothing happening. There's no change in their life because they're stuck. One out of the multitude is getting it. One out of the whole bunch is getting it. Stuck. Stuck because of tradition. Stuck. Oh, because they told us supposed to be like this. Stuck because this. Oh. We don't believe this. We don't believe that. Stuck. 38 years. 38 years. In the church. The whole church multitude stuck. Stuck. Ain't going nowhere. Everybody got an excuse. The, the excuse is they became jaded. They became numb. Something ain't happening to me. But God said to let you know you one second away. Oh, y'all hear me? You don't understand how serious this message is. You don't see if anybody understand me or know me, you don't know. I ain't just come here to just give you a message because there's death in the camp. There's death in the camp. And God said, go get the word because guess what? They so numb, they don't understand that death is in the camp. They don't understand that death is, oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Looking at me like I'm crazy, but I come to give you a word straight from God. God said, guess what? Will you be made whole? Or are you going to continue to hold on to tradition? Oh, to the rudiments of men. Oh, they told me it happened like this. I got to go down like this. I got to lay hands like this. I got to shout like this. But what is God saying? He said, I'm the God of now. I'm the God of God. I'm the God of now. You ain't got to wait, baby. You ain't got to be chained no more. You ain't got to be numb to it no more. They told me do some backslips. My money, I gave my, I did it all. Slide down this way, do it that way. Turn around three times, six times, do it seven times. That's God's lucky number, and I still was messed up. Oh, I'm gonna be real. I still was messed up. I still was in the sheets. And, and act like I'm all right. Jaded to 
what to, to what was true. Jaded to the truth. Jaded to know that God is a God that delivers if you want to be delivered.
set free, raise the dead, heal cancer, heal AIDS, tuberculosis, multitudes, thousands of souls saved. I didn't believe that it could happen to me. Massages on the beach. As much as I love massages, my body was in too much pain to even get a massage. But for some reason, I just went over to him and said, Listen, you were working so hard, husband and wife. I said, I just want to just sew this into you. I don't. I said, No, no. I said, No, I don't want it. I don't want it. And I went back. And they came to me and my daughter. He said, God told us that you are somebody special. Amen. And um, they cooked for me. They, 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 they took, they went around and got herbal drinks and stuff. Till I could, till I could eat. Till they could cook for me. They said, no, we, he said, uh, we, we're closed down. Our assignment is to take care of you. Come on. I couldn't walk, I couldn't eat, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't sleep. I ain't sleep in days. And God said, no, you are somebody special. They went and got the prophet on the island come and minister to me. Come here, Jeff. Watch your feet, Tony. And told me mm -hmm. come here. whatever was formed is not going to work. He didn't tell me that stuff wouldn't happen. He says it's not going to work. But I was so jaded I couldn't receive it because I couldn't believe it could happen to me. I come to let you know you and all how fine you are, fine as wide, Tall, good looking, whatever it is, it can happen to you in one second. You are a second away from it. You are a second away from it. It says, it says, uh, 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 thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Tells Ezekiel, says, Ezekiel, Ezekiel. But what is this? He said, dry bones. He said, Ezekiel, um, can these bones live? He, he was looking at people condition all the time. How many of us is looking at people all and, and get, we're just numb to it because that's who they are. That's who they, that, you know she got a two problem. That, that's just how Mary Sue is. Don't worry about me. Mary Sue gonna go to hell with her two that. Because she think, because she got a two, she all right. Because he deals with fornication. He deals with uh, 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 homosexuality. This one deals with lesbian. I only deal with a two. And we have to judge situations. And don't realize sin is sin, no matter how you slice it and dice it. Ain't no sin going to heaven. He was, he was jaded. He looked. He seen them in their condition. God didn't have to tell him, uh, uh, you see these bones here? He said, it's the whole house of Israel. It's the whole church. You're a pastor with a bunch of dead, dried up people. Now, can they? He said, 
Lord, I, 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 ain't, I don't know. I can't say nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> he says, they said that our bones is exceedingly dry. They said that there's no hope.
that us that picked up, got stuck, became jaded, became simpler, and said, I don't care how long you've been in it, I already know, I ain't come, I ain't come to judge it. And watch how you're judging people. Because you know something. I know what you put down. Guess what? God know what you put down too. Just because minds came open, guess what? You are set. Y'all don't want to hear it. Y'all don't want to hear what I got to say in here. Life is as a vapor. Pairs a moment and vanishes away. I want you to understand. Stand to your feet. Will thou be made whole? That's all he asks me. Will you be honest with thine own self? He said, I picked up some stuff. I got stuck. And I've just been numb to it. God is here. He said, I wrapped myself up in flesh. I came down right here in this world. That laid it for the traditions, laid it for all the rudiments of men that you've been taught. But I'm here to set you free today. Today. I know there's another church service coming. I'm letting you know take this word, eat it. Deliverance is coming. Don't let it be said it was too late for you. Don't let it be said that the prophet came and spoke and you didn't take heed. Come on, let's give God some praise. I'm going to say a quick prayer. I'm going to pray a prayer. I would love to pray for everybody, but we don't have time for that. Don't have time. I know y'all didn't know that I was coming, so I have to respect that. I know God hears me always. And because he hears me always, I believe the prayer that God may do what he said he's going to do. Touch and agree with me. Lift your hands up. Father, we thank you. We praise thee. Come on, clap your hands. Make some noise. Tell the Lord how to seize the word. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. The word that comes to the Lord has come to my house. And because he's come to my house, I'm excited because he comes to my house. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, I bind the hand of the adversary, set you about and you defeat. I rebuke, I rebuke the spirit of death, the spirit of fear. I rebuke it, I curse it in Jesus' name. I speak life, you shall live. You shall live. Loose them from wherever they're stuck in. Bring them to the knowledge to let things go. Where they're numb at, God, I'm asking you to give your mercy. Put your mercy there. That they'll see themselves. Father, I thank thee, I praise thee. I thank you for the deliverance that's taken place already in the minds of thy people, in the hearts of thy people. Thank you for the change. And we, uh, we thank you, God, because your yes is as good as your no. Your yes is as good as you kill somebody and let them go. And it's as good as someone that you raised up. We accept what you do in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen. amen.